Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. Emotions and how to master them, how to work with them is today's topic. Now, I said before the break that uh, the first step to really connecting to your emotions and no longer just running away from them is to change your idea about them, change your relationship to them. So if you see emotions as normal, and you're no longer flawed when you have an emotion, even if it's for a longer time, even if you felt like, well, I am flawed because I am anxious. I am flawed because I'm always sad. I'm always depressed. Well, you are not your emotions. They're a part of you and you create them, but you are not your emotions. But you also do not want to have your emotions just be something that you feel is your burden, but something that you see more as, okay, this is also my responsibility and this is something I have, this I accept as a part of my nature and there must be a reason for them to be there and I'm curious to find out what that reason is. Because when you do have emotions, life feels more real. Now, of course, when you have negative emotions, you don't like life to feel like this because it feels like hell sometimes. But in the end, if we wouldn't have emotions, we wouldn't feel anything. Life wouldn't mean anything. Just like a thought, an idea only has meaning when you put it into action. A thought also only has meaning when we feel something about it. An event only has meaning when there is a, an emotion connected to it. A memory will only stick if it's emotionally charged. Our whole life could be a complete string of nothing if we wouldn't feel anything anymore. So emotions are really just that, what makes life worth living. And they are in many ways our greatest teacher, probably also our greatest obstacles, but we can handle them. We just have to learn more about those emotions than just labeling them as negative or as good or is black or white. So what I would like you to imagine is now that the emotion is something that comes not just from, you know, some misfirings and little brain cells, which, yeah, it's very scientific and very great, but it doesn't really help you to have a deeper understanding to your emotions. What if you imagine your emotions right now just coming from something like a body? an emotional body. There are great traditions that talk about the emotional body and even the Egyptians, when they talked about the Ka and the Ba body, were basically talking about some other parts of us that are not in the physical form, but that have a huge impact on how we feel and how we go through life. So imagine your emotions coming from an emotional body, whatever you want to imagine in this regard. It can be an overlay that is simply overlaying your physical form like an extra layer of energy. It can be a body in your heart, in your core, in the form and shape of a child, a little self. It can be even a cartoon figure like in uh, Inside Out, that great cartoon movie where every emotion has a little personality. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that you are starting to see yourself connected to, but also separate from your emotions. And the beauty is when you're seeing the emotion as something that is a part of you, just like your physical body is a part of you, you are much more eager to take care of it and to pay attention to it and also to work with it and get the most of it than if you just see it as something that you don't understand you cannot touch, you cannot feel, and you certainly cannot control. So picture your emotional body in that way and then think about how this body could look like when you, for example, feel anxious. You know, if you close your eyes for a moment and just picture your emotional body in anxiety, maybe this body looks like a little hunched forward, it looks like a little darker, it looks like tense somehow. Maybe you see a little kid inside of your core crying and cowering down in the corner. Whatever you see, you just now can have a visual to your emotion. And when you see something 
struggling, in pain, scared, there is another aspect of you that just feels much more inclined to take care of this, to understand it, to make it feel better. So you are losing your distance when you are seeing the emotional body in whatever form that may be. That's the number step number one. Honor, embrace, and respect that your emotions are a part of you. Number two is listen to your emotions. And listening to your emotions is not just being in a place where you, as I said before, staring at them. Saying, oh, here is anxiety. So I'm going to stare at my anxiety and that's all I do. Actually, listening to your emotions goes further than that. And I will do a little meditation at the end of the show where you can go through a process that really could be a daily routine to get in touch with your emotions and listen to them. See, just like with our physical body, we have to listen to our body not only when it's in excruciating pain. When you are in a place where, let's say, you know you're eating too much ice cream, but you never pay attention to your digestive system, you never pay attention to the joint pains, you just keep on doing something to yourself that hurts your physical body, well, at some point it screams, ouch, even louder, so that you are paying attention to that. That happens often with emotions too. We are not paying attention, we are in our heads, we are distracting ourselves, we don't want to feel anything. And then the emotions first nudge, and then maybe they are saying something a little bit louder, and then they kick and scream, and then you have a panic attack. Or then you feel like you cannot sleep anymore because your mind is racing and your heart is pounding. And So just knowing that I have a responsibility to pay to, uh, attention to my emotions every day, not only once in a while. I need to know what's going on with them. So if you are sitting every day and just asking yourself more often, so how do I feel? What's going on? Maybe your answer will be, well, I still feel anxiety. You can interpret this feeling also just by your physical uh, realization that there is something tense and tight, or maybe there is something that chokes you up in your throat. And in the past, you always thought, well, this is anxiety. Now, this is already a good step, right? I'm listening to my emotions. I know I have anxiety. I'm not just starting running now. Oh, my God, there is the anxiety. I'm patiently asking more questions. So now the next question is, what specifically do I feel? The anxiety is such a big word, right? It's a, it could be because there is a line in front of your door, or it could be because you just get a bill in the mail. All this could be interpreted as anxiety. So if you ask more specifically, so what specifically do you feel? Maybe you get the answer of, well, I'm feeling overwhelmed, or maybe I feel small, or maybe I feel tight and tense. Then you know a little bit more about what's possibly underneath that feeling of anxiety. Maybe you already know. Maybe you know, oh, this is my brother Bill who is always telling me how great he is and always makes me feel uncomfortable at these parties and I have to go and I'm feeling that apprehension because of it. Or maybe it's about, you know, my relatives that are on the East Coast and I'm feeling worried about them because of the hurricane. There may be all different kinds of reasons that you already know. But if you don't know, you can also simply ask further questions. So what specifically do you feel tense, overwhelmed, or stressed about? And if you take your time and you're looking at this emotional body as that form inside of you or around you that can give you answers, you will eventually get a more clear idea of what that feeling is all about. And you can name it. You can give it a context. Now, research has shown that the moment you name an emotion, it loses its power. It's almost like the moment you see it and you can describe it, that emotion is no longer bigger than you, but you're the one who became the observer. And you're the one who now has it in this nice little, you know, place of, I'm going to 
do something with it rather than feeling you are doing this to me, you bad emotion. So name the emotion, get a little bit more information about what it may be telling you. And then you have actually accomplished that relationship of you being the one who is the mentor or the caretaker of the emotion and the emotion feeling, oh, someone is paying attention, someone is listening. I have done this for more than 15 years with clients to let them just be aware of their feelings and the negative thoughts that come with those feelings. And what they notice is just by not turning your back on them and just sitting with them and listening with a certain kind of kindness and compassion, just like a caring person would do, those emotions diminish dramatically. It's almost like, oh, finally, finally someone is here and pays attention and listens. And I often think about myself as a child when I was lost in a, in a big department store. My parents were somehow distracted with trying to, I don't know what they were trying to buy, but certainly they were not looking out for the little boy. And so I was running around like panic because I couldn't find them anymore. And, uh, you know, the more anxious I got, the more I really didn't know what to do. And Finally, someone asked me, so what's going on with your parents? And I was just so scared that I blurted out my name and she couldn't really understand my name. All she could understand was, you know, Walter, which is my third name. It's Freedom and Julius Walter. So she only heard Walter and then she said through this, you know, a speaker system, well, little Walter is looking for his parents. Well, apparently the story goes that my parents were, you know, really looking down on Walter's parents who apparently, you know, have totally forgotten about their child. And it took them about five minutes to realize, oh, Walter is actually our son and he is the one who is lost. And when we have our little emotional body being so scared, so ignored, so forgotten, that feels exactly how I felt in this department store, just screaming louder, feeling more confused, feeling more overwhelmed. And this is one reason why our emotions can be so overwhelming, simply because they get stronger and stronger the longer they get ignored. And just by doing that little step of paying attention and listening and patiently being there, you already have started to create a relationship with your emotions. Now the third step is then to work with them. And this is what we're gonna talk about after the break. 